Hi, friends, and welcome to this worship broadcast of St. Paul Lutheran Church, Davenport, Iowa. It's June 20th, 2021, and we're delighted to be together on this uh, Father's Day weekend. If you're a dad, I hope you're celebrating. If there is some figure in your life, maybe a father figure who's been a mentor, a coach, uh, a teacher, or in fact your dad, I hope you honor or remember that uh, individual today. It's Vacation Bible School Week here at the church. That means lots of kids all over the place. And uh, because kids are masked, we've had to make a lot of adjustments, uh, but we're doing it. And there's all kinds of beautiful commitment for many of you who are volunteering to help. Uh, give thanks for the commitment behind that entire effort, Vacation Bible School at St. Paul. Last weekend, we opened up fully as a church, and it was exciting. I can't describe, if you weren't here fully, what the uh, emotions of the weekend were, but lots of tears, lots of joy. The liveliness of Christian community is back at St. Paul, and it's a thrill. Um, just visit with someone who came or come yourself in the coming uh, weeks. We'll have four services each and every weekend, and there's one for you. Uh, because of the demands of those now on-site in-person services and the full complement of everything, including uh, the Lord's Supper and other refreshments served, uh, we will be ceasing this video cast of our worship uh, after next Sunday, June 27th. The time, the energy, the resources to sustain both simultaneously uh, is just not realistic for uh, what we are and who we are. But if you're in this community, I hope you will come on any weekend you can. And if you ever travel through Davenport, if you're at a distance, by all means, um, look for this to be a place of belonging for you. Beginning July 11th, we will be podcasting elements of our service. And for those of you at a distance, this should be, I hope, a rewarding way to stay in touch with the ministry here that I know has meant something or means uh, deep things. To you. On July 4th, we'll actually have a video cast we'll send out uh, with a link that you will receive of a kind of behind the scenes look at what it took to put these video services together. It should be uh, both delightful and informative. Look forward to that. Well, we're going to sing, and if you don't want to sing uh, with your computer screen and anybody else in your room, well, at least listen well and hum along as we sing Word of God. You will remain. 
Let us join together in prayer. O God of creation, you preside over land and water, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our reading today is from the Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. This is the Sea of Galilee. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took Jesus with them into the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. Now a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat upon that boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. Jesus said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, saying to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Fifteen years ago this summer, I was in Israel filming a documentary on Jesus of Nazareth. I wasn't doing the filming, I was actually doing the narrating. And a cameraman and a producer and I traveled the better part of that country. On the fifth or sixth day, we were up at the Sea of Galilee. And I remember the producer saying to the cameraman, we've got to find a boat. We've got to get Peter into a boat and out in the water. That was the vision they had, but we had no connections with anybody in the boating world in northeast Israel there. So we would go down these driveway-like roads and often find ourselves on private property as we took that frontage road around this massive lake, seven miles wide or long as it was. Well, those were a lot of dead ends for us, but uh, down one gravel road where there was a gravel parking lot, there were a bunch of small fishing boats in the water. And beneath a a low-hanging tree and somewhat in the reeds and pulled up on the rocks, there was this wooden rowboat, a decrepit rowboat. I suppose a viewer of the documentary, if we could use it, would say, this is like from the first century. This is a real rowboat. Well, the only guys around were these two drunks standing next to a fire pit at the corner of the gravel parking lot, and they were hammered. (laughs) Their speech was slurred. Uh, Not that we knew a word of Arabic or whatever dialect of Palestinian Aramaic they might have spoken. But with a lot of improvised sign language, which would mean pointing, and the dangling of what was essentially uh, the equivalent of 50 bucks in front of their eyes, we talked them into loaning us this rowboat. Well, I took a look in this rowboat, and it was not a pleasant sight. There were fish bones and guts on the floor. Uh, The seat was all slime. Uh, So I actually took my script, my narration script, and put that on the seat because I wanted to protect my pants uh, from the mess. So my bottom went on this 8.5 by 11-inch piece of real estate, and I rode out to sea. Well, it didn't take long to realize that I really had no business being in this boat without a life jacket. And uh, it was a beautiful day and a calm day, but I hadn't gone 50, 75 yards before I realized uh, this boat is taking on water. And my shoes were pretty much by that point underwater. These were the only shoes I had brought on the trip, and so I'm thinking, boy, the rest of filming today, I hope it's from the waist or knees up. But we kept going, and... uh, I realized that as the boat was adding water to its insides, uh, I was getting more anxious. I could swim, so I didn't totally panic. But we had to retake that scene about ten times because I hadn't memorized the script. And I was nervous. My my heart rate was going up as this boat is 
filling up with water. I remember even telling myself that I could just see, uh, jokingly, a headline uh, in a newspaper that would say, Naive Lutheran Pastor Drowns in the Sea of Galilee. Well, we got the shoot finished, and uh, I was never happier to be on shore than on that day. I, I never once thought uh, about much biblical things while I was out on the water because I was thinking about my own survival, frankly. But had I thought of a Bible story, this one would have been a potential benefit to me. This one of Jesus and the disciples out on the Sea of Galilee. Where the disciples say to Jesus, who's in the boat, doesn't it matter to you that we are drowning? From everything we can tell, this was a, a, a furious storm, a malicious, chaotic wind. Uh, I read the story, and I think it must have been the mother of all sea squalls, uh, to be perfectly honest. Interestingly enough, Jesus, for his part, was sleeping in the back of the boat. And it was the disciples who kind of woke him up with an exclamation point. You don't care that we're actually dying out here? They seem to say to Jesus. Well, if we read on in the story, it's uh, quite clear that uh, Jesus, in fact, calms the wind, settles down the waves. He questions the faith of the disciples, which I actually might take to be an invitation to entertain a different kind of faith, than the faith that they were probably practicing. And when all is said and done, uh, everybody arrives safely and the disciples' jaws drop in awe for what they have just experienced. Well, there are all kinds of things we could take away from this uh, story, but let me leave you today with three. I think three of significance. The first one I, I, I want to leave with you is that sometimes, it seems to me at least, sometimes our Lord leads us into a storm. Now, from the psalmist, we think, well, God leads us beside still waters, which is most certainly true. But I do think there are occasions when God actually leads us into a storm. It wasn't the disciples' harebrained idea to leave at dusk and encounter this dangerous storm as dark is approaching. It was Jesus' idea. The disciples were not disobedient. They were, in fact, very obedient. And if you think about it, in our own lives, it's sometimes when we are most faithful and most obedient that things come upon us that we didn't ask for, nor did we seek. If you've ever had to bathe an infirm parent whom you believe is under your care, well, that's something you probably never asked for. It just comes or to change the diaper of a loved one who's dying of a virulent cancer. That's something you don't seek. Or if you have experienced divorce, you never dreamed it would happen to you, and you certainly never asked for it to be your experience. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, faith is not, you know, God blessing us with ease and Safety no matter what, and convenience. Faith, if you take a story like this, faith is much more about trusting our everything uh, for this Lord who will lead us through both the still waters of life and the storms. The second takeaway from this little story, it seems to me, is that we tend to think that the miracle is, is, is the Lord Jesus calming the wind and settling those waves. But I actually think the greatest miracle of this story is that Jesus finds a way to calm the disciples who are in the middle of that storm. A lot of people think the Christian life is this peaceful voyage, this, uh, this most secure sail, that God is in the business of navigating us around the storms of life. But I, I can't see this to be the case, actually. It doesn't match reality as I've seen the world. Um, the Christian life is often not about a peaceful and safe voyage. It is, in fact, uh, encountering a lot of uh, storms. 
The third thing I want to say as a takeaway from this little story, uh, and this may be the most important thing, uh, it, it's the actual wording of this story where at the beginning it says, when evening had come and Jesus had decided by that point to leave the crowd behind, the disciples took Jesus into the boat and then, Mark writes, just as he was. Yeah, they took him into the boat just as he was which is maybe a way of saying Jesus wasn't pretending to be somebody he wasn't, nor was he supposing himself to be more than he was. He just stepped into that boat as he was. I think of how beautiful it would be if we could receive each other just as we are, you know? Uh, not uh, as we think someone else ought to be, but if I could receive you and you could receive me just as I am and just as you are. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Last week in uh, my sermon, I mentioned a, a graduation story from high school uh, out in a Boston area. And today I want to mention another quick little graduation story, this one from Boot, Louisiana, where at Hanville High School and their graduation uh, ceremonies of a couple weeks ago, a high school senior this tall, skinny kid named Devarius Peters um, approaches the gymnasium to enter commencement, and the gatekeeper, who was a school employee there, uh, wouldn't allow him to enter the gymnasium because he wasn't wearing the dark dress shoes that was the dress code for commencement guys. Well, the various Peters didn't buy dark dress shoes because he figured he'd never wear them again, so he bought some dark leather sneakers. Didn't matter to the woman at the door, she was not about to let him in, at, at which point he started to panic. He spent his whole year in remote learning and he had no options now. There was certainly no time to go buy shoes. So he's wandering around aimlessly outside and he comes upon this Mr. Butler, who's a paraeducator on the faculty there. And Mr. Butler figures, well, I'll go talk to this woman, which he does. And she's insistent, no. This senior student is not getting into commencement until he wears dark dress shoes. I think the teacher, the paraeducator, thought, what the heck is this all about? Uh, so his only option at that point, as far as he was concerned, was to take the shoes off of his own feet and put them on the feet of Devarius Peters, which is what he did. It was kind of a cute, touching moment. It allowed this, this boy to enter commencement and graduate. Uh, and a rather cute scene of him sliding across the stage because he was size nine shoe, nine shoe and the, the teacher, the paraeducator, was size 11. So they didn't really fit, but he was able to graduate. I hear that story and I think, oh my goodness, couldn't he be received just as he was? Wouldn't that be wonderful if we didn't just make such a one jump through hoops like that? It would seem so. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we could receive each other just as we are? Oh my goodness, I think of church. For goodness sakes, come as you are. Bring the character that you are. You don't have to pretend to be somebody whom you are not. When it was evening, the disciples got into the boat with Jesus just as he was. Well, what was he? What was Jesus when he climbed into that boat? I have two suggestions to offer. The first one is, I think he was exhausted. You read the chapters before chapter 4 in Mark's gospel, and he was teaching and preaching and healing innumerable people with all kinds of needs in these crowds. Uh, the Savior of the world was depleted. I also think Jesus got into that boat confident. Yeah, he was confident of God's grace. God having the capacity to outmuscle a storm. He was confident of his present and future in God the Father. He was confident that God would not let him go. I have no way to prove that Jesus was both exhausted and confident. But it occurs to me that when we're living our best days, that's exactly how we conclude each day. When you put your head on the pillow at the end of a day, you may be exhausted in mind or in body. And 
If you live by faith, you also have a right to be confident. Confident that God's grace has carried you through that day and that God's grace will be sufficient and renewing for the coming day. It's a pretty good day when you lie down at the end exhausted and confident. And come to think of it, the people whom I watch die in peace are people of faith who on their deathbed are exhausted, which is evident in their eyes and which you can witness in the weariness of their bodies. But they're also confident that God's power is made known in weakness, that God's grace is sufficient for all eternity and that they have a home in the heart of God. I can't prove that Jesus got into that boat, both into that boat, both exhausted and confident. But if he identifies so closely with our experience, as we're led to believe and as he promises, and our daily experience in its best moments is one of exhaustion and confidence in the grace of God, well, maybe that's what Jesus was on that day. When it was evening, the disciples got into the boat with him just as he was. Amen. Hey, girls and boys, it's time for the kids' message. If you're not there already, go ahead and come closer. Ooh, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's, it's kind of storming here, girls and boys. It's raining, and there's thunder, and there's lightning. So I've gone ahead, and I've grabbed a few of the things that make me feel a little bit safer, a little bit better, a little bit more secure in a storm, and I'm going to show them to you. So first, I've got this umbrella. It's nice and colorful. And if I were to have to go outside, this umbrella would do a pretty good job protecting me in the rain. See, uh, it becomes pretty big. It goes over my head. Uh, it provides some pretty good protection. So when there's a storm, I like to have my umbrella. Another thing I really like to have around in a storm is fuzzy bear. Fuzzy Bear is pretty loved in our house. He's very cuddly and warm and soft, and he just gives me a feeling of comfort and closeness. So I like to have Fuzzy Bear in a storm. And then one more thing, girls and boys. This is Ginny. And the great thing about Ginny in a storm is that in all of the loud thunder and lightning and rain, Ginny plays this music that's so soft and comforting and gives me this light. And all of that together, the music and the light, Ginny kind of gives me peace. So I like to have Ginny in a storm. You know, girls and boys, the Bible story that we're talking about in today's worship actually happens when the disciples are on a boat. Now, unlike you and me, they didn't know that a storm was coming. They were just on that boat and it happened. So they didn't have their umbrella. They didn't have Fuzzy Bear or one of their favorite animals, and they didn't have something that played music. But they did have Jesus with them. And even though they didn't have those other things, Jesus could protect them and keep them safe. Jesus could bring them comfort and be close to them. And Jesus could give them peace. In fact, when that storm was going on, girls and boys, Jesus was just sleeping peacefully there on the boat, trying to remind them and teach them that in the midst of whatever storms life brings, in Jesus they can have all kinds of peace. Jesus brings all of these things to those disciples and to us because Jesus loves us. So when we're in a storm, we can have our umbrella and we might have a teddy bear or some other thing that plays music for us. But that protection, that comfort, and that peace, they also come from Jesus, who is with us always. In fact, girls and boys, that is sort of what we mean when we share that peace of Jesus with each other. So let's do that now. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we say, and also with you. pray on this June day for faith in our own lives and faith in the lives of others. O God of still waters, we have the distinct sense that you are also the God of storms as well. Or at least you have a way of leading us right into different storms sometimes. Without spelling out precise definitions of what constitutes a storm in our lives, you and we both know the challenges that can knock the wind or spirit right out of us. So infuse us with your peace. Carry us through the toughest times in our lives. God, we lift this prayer to you. Just as I am without one plea, that's how a hymn of the church describes the Christian life and our reliance on your grace. So now help us to be at home in our own skin just as we are. Teach us to be comfortable turning to you. Receive us, if you would, just as we are, not merely as we wish we were. God, we lift this prayer to you. It gives us more assurance than anxiety, Lord, to know that you were asleep in that boat in the middle of that storm. Help us to benefit from the peace that is within you. At the end of every day, and frankly, at the end of our life, Grant that the exhaustion from our labors and the confidence we have in your grace will combine to allow us to sleep in peace. God, we lift this prayer to you. We pray for our world as superpower nations jockey for trade leverage and tariff power, and as each country tries to spook every other country with its military might, give some comfort to us little people. We watch Vladimir Putin and Joe Biden talk about important things, at least we hope. We see the expansive inclinations of China. We wonder what's next for Europe. We worry about developing countries not having enough vaccines. Remind us that this is your world, and it is in you that we place our trust. God, we lift this prayer to you. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together in Jesus' presence, let us pray the prayer he taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as, as we, we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen.
In Christ, there is calm. With Christ, there is courage. Under Christ, there is confidence. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Peace of the earth.